We made no assumption about one form of chemotherapy being any better than another. We just took two groups of patients who are getting standard UK based adjuvant chemotherapy and decided to randomly assign GCSF rescue at the first incidence of low white count that would affect their further treatment by reducing dose or delaying dose or if they are indeed turned up in hospital with neutropenic sepsis which would come out of the same thing. And what we found was that bringing GCSF as secondary prophylaxis, which is what you'd call that, had a massive effect on the ability to deliver the drug doses at the right doses on time. 25 to 30 percent difference in the two groups and the most striking thing to come from that is to say that for the control group the average dose intensity was only 50 percent of planned. So you wonder what benefit they got from that given old Gianni Bonadonna's data from the 70s and the 90s which showed that 50% dose intensity was little better than nothing at all. My recommendation is that we should take GCSF in this country far more seriously than NICE appears to be doing. Uh, and they have so far not responded to our comments about this being an important study. We will need to get some more support money to do that extra analysis, but that was my intention. Triple negative tends to be the sort of cancer that is quite aggressive. It has a, an aggressive pathology and that seems to reflect an aggressive clinical course as well. And I tend to feel when I've got a triple negative patient in front of me, well, I'll do the best I can with chemotherapy, but I'm not terribly optimistic about the future. And that's because we simply don't have handles to attack the cancer with other than cytotoxics. Yes, they do respond well to initial treatment, but typically they become resistant rather quickly. At the moment, it's, it stands that we have to use cytotoxic drugs, the best drugs we've got possible. An argument about whether we should be using platinum-type drugs to add to the benefit because the triple negative phenotype is said to have a, a poor ability to repair single-strand damage, which is where platinum agents are effective. But so far, there's little evidence that platinum agents make that much difference, sadly. What's interesting at this conference, though, is that there are some studies now on the molecular pathology of triple negative cancer and indeed the immune response to triple, triple negative cancer, which might indicate a new avenue for, for, for exploring either targeted drugs against the molecules or indeed trying to boost the immune system. It should be quite an exciting new avenue to follow. So watch this space. At the moment, it's early days, but we stay with the standard chemotherapies at the moment, hoping that around the corner, we might have improvements from these different approaches. It's very often the case that the early response to chemotherapy is actually very good. The problem is the high rate of relapse early on. I don't think in this country they get a good deal. I don't think they get a very good deal in Europe. The problem has been that if you look at the genuine audit statistics, you'll find that there's less aggressive surgery, there's less investigation of stage, uh, there's less use of radiotherapy and there's much less use of chemotherapy stage for stage as against the under 70s and there does appear to be a bit of a biblical cutoff. Three score years and ten, that's it mate, you, you're going to have to manage on your own. I think we have to be better at assessing their general fitness. Of course older people have more, cor more comorbid disease and that is often in, a, in an appropriate way uh, a factor which doctors weigh in the, in the balance and say, well, I can't really risk giving this lady a dangerous chemotherapy given that she's already hypertensive, given that she's already got cardiac disease. And that's a, a very reasonable way to do things. But we're not doing it very scientifically. We are actually almost putting our finger in the air and saying, for this case, I won't give it. And that happens at the MDTs as much as in the consulting rooms. You can't engage the use of a, of, a, of a geriatrician's skills all the time, but we should try to incorporate some of the lessons that they've learned about uh, managing older women and older patients by using the sort of scales that they use to assess general fitness, independence and so on, and come to some decision about that patient's ability to withstand chemotherapy for a few months, given that, as we all realise, the average age of a 70-year-old in this country now, and women, is about 15 years or more. And what you don't want to do is to, is to start managing relapsed breast cancer in that time because we haven't treated them properly in the first place.
Well, I've only seen the headlines of this presentation, so I may be being a bit unfair, but what I read from that um, headline information is that, yes, there may well be still a high incidence of advanced stage disease. It's not clear why that's happening from the data that I have. It could be that the women who present with late stage disease simply aren't turning up for screening. Even in the best institutions in the UK, 75% rates of attendance are what you're getting. So it all depends on how that's being pushed. The other element to his uh, headline is that they picked up a lot of earlier stage disease or low stage disease in the screening. So I, my, my question to him would be, well, haven't those patients gained from having disease diagnosed at an earlier stage? Yes, it may be that they really are positive, they've got naturally a very good natural history, but the reality is, stage for stage, the smaller the tumour, the less node involvement, regardless of age, their prognosis is going to be better. So I think that group may have gained from it. I think psychology is the first thing to deal with there, is to say, I don't think old women are as fragi fragile psychologically as we'd like to think they are. I think they're quite tough psychologically, and that wouldn't bother them. And this, by the same argument, I don't think their genome is quite as fragile as in a younger patient, and the likelihood of radiation damage causing later cancer, I think, is a trivial and irrelevant argument. Unnecessary procedures are an argument across all age groups, not confined to the elderly. They're as entitled to get a, a biopsy diagnosis as a woman of 55, not less entitled, entitled in the same way. And of course there are going to be misdiag not misdiagnoses, but benign disease diagnosed that way. So what? I think the overall gain speaks for itself.